Hello folks, I'm Stefan Karakowski from Genome Labs and uh, I want to present to you uh, today the recent experiments which we at Genome Labs did with uh, the ARM so-called TrustZoom, which is a security tool and feature in uh, modern ARM CPUs. And therefore I've s some development brought from Freescale here which you can see here. So it's a really uh, big brick of a development board because you have uh, things like JTAG and uh, several other stuff on it. And um, we used this board uh, two years ago when we uh, started with um, Trust Zone experiments uh, because it's one of the few development platforms which are open with respect to the ARM security extensions, the so-called TrustZoom features. And TrustZoom was somehow interesting for us because we are um, operating system developers with a specific um, scope on security and therefore we wanted to explore uh, what we can do with ARM TrustZoom. So just let me just turn it on. Okay, so I've pressed the power button and as you can see in a few seconds the G Node operating system boots on the secure side of the ARMS trust zone on this tablet. So what you can see here is the G Node operating system, a microkernel based, uh, component based uh, operating system. So one of the components which are now running is for instance the menu here on the left side or this small um, status uh, debug console and we can now press the trust zoom scenario button on this in this menu and it will start a kind of virtual machine monitor which is uh, responsible for controlling the so-called normal world of the arm trust zoom and uh, as you can see in this small cute application um, we have an initial register set and if I press the play button in the graphical user interface then there's a signal sent from the graphical user interface to the virtual machine monitor and it will boot an Android operating system uh, so you can see the small Linux penguin and uh, over here this is a small version of the frame buffer of uh, the Linux kernel and I can also uh, bring it into the foreground. So what you can see here now is uh, Android in full screen, but uh, it doesn't get the whole screen. A small title bar, which is uh, coming from the GNOTE nitpicker uh, window manager, uh, gives you a th the user control uh, over which site and which component is now active. So what we can see now in, is a red title bar and if I switch back to the GNOTE site and uh, take another component, uh, you can see that it uh, switches the title bar. So if I go back to Android, I, I always know whether I'm in the secure or in the non-secure world. And you may think of uh, things getting slower by copying a lot of pixels, but this is not the case. So um, the Linux operating system, in this case Android, gets control of the graphical uh, processing unit, the GPU, but not on the uh, frame buffer device. It just informs the um, secure world by using parallel virtualization techniques where it's, its own frame buffer uh, resides in memory and the secure side uh, is now responsible for uh, using uh, special mechanisms within the uh, frame buffer device to um, overlay the Linux uh, frame buffer on the secure frame buffer. So uh, thereby the non-secure side gets full control of um, graphical um, advantages like uh, 3D and uh, 2D uh, processing 
features of the graphic user, graphical processing unit, but uh, it doesn't have the full control uh, of the, on, on the screen. For instance, it cannot forge the uh, title bar. So and, uh, as you can see, the Android runs with nearly native performance. And it's isolated, so this NSA spyware cannot influence the secure site, which can be shown by starting another application on the secure site, which takes a lot of processing uh, power because this is rendered in software. And what we can now see is that this non-secure site um, yeah, doesn't get any CPU power at all because everything is uh, used by by the secure site. So it's pretty unusable now. Just let stop this and we can again play Angry Birds. So thank you for your attention and have a nice day.